Hello, hello. This is Silent Night, and welcome to Silence Tech Tips. Today, we are going to show you how to bypass the NVIDIA GeForce Experience login screen. As you can see here, when you close out of the login screen, you can't actually use any of the features of GeForce Experience. This is highly annoying for a couple of reasons. One, NVIDIA loves telemetry. And as you might have noticed, they allow you to create a NVIDIA account using an external account such as your Facebook or Google. This saves time in the account creation process, but it also allows NVIDIA to link their telemetry to your external account. I normally wouldn't care about this, but due to the fact that the GeForce Experience has the capability of recording your screen, uh, it just, it's a little creepy, man. I mean, if they were to do something like that, they most likely would not be sending the video files over the internet, as that would eat up a lot of bandwidth. But who's to say that there's not an algorithm just parsing the text that's on screen and phoning home with it? So by bypassing the login screen, you're actually preventing NVIDIA from linking their telemetry to any of your external accounts. At the end of this video, I'll also show you how to prevent your computer from contacting NVIDIA's telemetry servers. And this will work regardless or not whether you use the bypass method to bypass the login screen. Now you could just create a burner email and create a NVIDIA account using that that's not linked to any external accounts, but that's just a lot to keep track of and it brings us to our number two reason as well, which is that the GeForce experience sometimes sucks and it just forgets your login information for whatever reason and it makes you sign in again and sometimes even do two-step verification just to update your drivers. It's very annoying. NVIDIA's sole competitor, AMD, does not do this, and while I had the opportunity of playing around with their software earlier this year on some RX 570s, and it was just a joy to use. They have the control panel and the driver updater in one program, and you don't even have to log in to use it. Okay, so let's get started. There are two different ways to do this. One way actually allows you to bypass it, and the other way is just a workaround, so to say. So let's start with the workaround. And before we begin, please know that at this time, neither method will allow you to use the game optimization feature. This feature isn't important to me anyway because I like to adjust the settings in my games the way I see fit. So if you're okay with that, here's the workaround method. Create that burner email that we were talking about earlier and then create a NVIDIA account using that burner email. Then log in to the GeForce experience. Yes, I know, log in you will log out soon. So, after you're logged in, go turn on the GeForce Experience Overlay. This alone will grant you the GeForce Experience Overlay and all of its features, including screen recording, even if you log out of the GeForce Experience, and it will persist on restarts of the computer. Then log out if you want. Close the GeForce Experience and never touch it again. But wait, you might be asking, how am I ever going to update my drivers again? And well, that's where a third party program comes in. Tiny NVIDIA Update Checker will nab the latest drivers for you as they're released, just like the GeForce Experience did. So yeah, that method really is a workaround sort of way. I mean, it needs a third party application to update the drivers for you. So what if you want to actually bypass the login screen? Well, I'll show you. There is a script on GitHub called by GFE, and you can Google it, but I'll also have the link to it down below. And what you're gonna do is go to the page here and check the about section to make sure that it's still compatible with the version of GeForce Experience that you're running. Now, if you want to just drag and drop a file with this easy copy paste fix, you can, but I don't recommend it because the GeForce Experience updates itself. And when it updates itself, you won't be able to log back in until you do the fix again. So there's an automatic method where you only have to run a small script file every time the GeForce Experience gets an update. I found this method slightly trickier than what they have listed here due to Windows permissions, and for that reason I'll be going over it in this video. First you're going to download the zip file from the GitHub page onto your PC. You're going to open it and copy the folder that's inside to anywhere you'd like. I just put it on the root of my C drive. Once you have it where you're going to leave it, open it up and find the .ps1 file. .ps1 files are PowerShell scripts, and this particular PowerShell script needs administrator privileges. 
And on the GitHub page, it says you should just be able to right click on it and click run as administrator. But first, before you're able to do this, you must run PowerShell as administrator and set the execution policy to remote signed. After you've typed this command into PowerShell and pressed enter, you'll be presented with some options and you're going to type the letter A and hit enter. Now that that's done, we can close out of PowerShell and go back to our PS1 file. Now, according to the GitHub, you should just be able to right click on it and click run as administrator. However, both PCs I tried this on, it didn't work for me. So the first one actually gave me the run as administrator option, but when I clicked it, it threw an error. The second PC I tried this on didn't even give me the run as administrator option. If you, for whatever reason, are able to run this PS1 file as administrator and have it work, then well, good for you. If not, I'm going to continue to show you how I fixed it for myself and how you can too. What you want to do is right click the PS1 file, go to properties and tick this little checkbox that says unblock. Then you're going to hit apply and then you can close out of this. Next up, you're going to make a shortcut of the PS1 file. So right click on it and click create shortcut. Then you're going to want to go to the properties of this shortcut file and at the beginning of target you're going to type in powershell.exe spacebar hyphen the letter F and then spacebar again and then you're going to hit apply. Now this will open up a new checkbox under the advanced menu that will allow this to be run as administrator. So you're going to check that and then hit apply and close out of everything. Now you can finally run the shortcut file we made and that should run the PowerShell script as administrator. After that, congratulations. Next time you open up your GeForce experience, the login will still appear, but this time you can close it and still have access to the GeForce experience menus, including the driver update and the ability to toggle the GeForce experience overlay. And if the GeForce experience ever gets an update, all you gotta do is run that shortcut file again. Now that you've done that and successfully bypassed the login, let's talk a little bit about how to prevent NVIDIA's other telemetry things by blocking their servers. This can be done by editing the Windows hosts file. The host file is what maps domain names to IP addresses. Normally it's used to assign domain names to servers on a network, but in this case, you can actually use it to point the NVIDIA server domain names to invalid IP addresses, therefore making your computer unable to contact them. Now there is a program on GitHub that also blocks the telemetry services that exist on your computer, but it's three years old and I really wouldn't trust it at this point. It's much easier to just edit the host file. All you need to do is find the host file in C Windows System32 Drivers ETC. On some computers you can edit the file directly, but on others you must copy it out of that directory and then edit it from there and then copy it back in and overwrite. But regardless, you're going to open it with a text editor and you'll copy and paste the lines on the by GFE page under the light block list section to the bottom of the host file. After you've saved it or saved and overwrite it if your computer wouldn't let you save it, you're also going to want to open command prompt as admin and run on IP config space slash flush DNS just for good measure. And just like that, you've blocked most of the unnecessary NVIDIA servers. Just remember you've made this change in case you ever need to go back and undo it. Well, that's all for this short little video. I have some game reviews that I've been working on that will be out in the near future. So stick around for that. Peace.